I'm really honored and glad to be here today. The reason I'm here today is because I heard a story. The story was about this young girl from rural Karnataka who was suffering from a very chronic disease called thalassemia. Picture this. This girl needs 30 units of blood every month to survive and to lead a normal life like you and me. We're living at a time where finding a single blood donor is difficult. And you know why? Because because many of us think it's not a big issue, and even if it is, one person alone cannot solve it. I knew nothing about thalassemia back then. I heard the word for the first time in my life. But I knew I had to do something about it. I went and looked at current platforms people use to find blood donors and spent some time to understand how effective they are. Well, none of them appealed to me. I felt they're not fishing where the fishes are. I'm a heavy Facebook user. I'm, I'm one of those who logged in in 2007 and never logged off. I have like 1,900 friends, out of which uh, I hardly met, I met 90. I know, I know many of you can relate to me, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. So questions started popping in my head. If my social networking site can tell me that my friend Raj's birthday is today, why can't it tell me that Raj met with an accident and requires two units of blood, or anonymously tell me that somebody in my extended network needs blood. I looked at my friend's list and said, you know, how can I use this connections I have here to create a platform where people can actually help each other? I went ahead, created eight Facebook groups for eight blood types, and invited general public to join in. With my minimal web designing skills, I created a portal, linked all the eight groups there, and called it Social Blood. I then invited my Facebook friends to join in. Not only they joined in, but they actually shared requests. They shared requests for blood. Slowly and steadily, the idea became viral, from my shared office space in Bangalore to people in Brazil, Pakistan, and Thailand. It became more like a community project, and people requested for groups in their countries. I would like to share a classic example of a man from Hyderabad who posted on social blood looking for blood donors for his daughter who was suffering from a heart disease. Within 24 hours, he received 70 calls from perfect strangers willing to help. That's the power of Facebook and human connections at large. After spending a year, of, year on the platform and talking to users, we realized we still are not doing it right. We miss the most important thing, location. Think about this, you live in Mumbai, would it make sense for you to go to Pune to donate blood? I was speaking to someone from South Bombay yesterday, and he said, dude, it doesn't even make sense for me to go to Andheri to donate blood. <laughs> mm. Exactly a month ago, we launched a service which has a potential to actually change the whole blood donation system. We're trying to make every aspect of blood donation social. I present to you Social Blood. This platform is really amazing. It can actually tell you how many of your Facebook friends share your blood type. Or you can actually see how many of your Facebook friends are O positive or B positive, so when in need, you can actually reach out to them. You can connect with a local blood bank or a hospital, and you can actually go there and donate blood. Social Blood was fundamentally started to make this world a better place. We didn't set out to make money, but create a movement, a movement where we plan to unite a billion people to solve the world's blood crisis. Mahatma Gandhi famously said, the world has enough for everybody's need, but not enough for everybody's greed. If one to three percent of a country's population donates blood, it's enough for a country's need. In over 73 countries, the donation levels are less than one percent of the population. Why is this happening? I think my talk today is not just about the global blood crisis. I think we're facing with a very different problem, the global compassion crisis. I think we can solve this problem. I'm really hoping that this generation will actually end the global blood crisis. We should solve the problem not out of charity, but because it's the shortest route to a common good. Thank you. <laughs>